Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is a video for the subject of education and it is intended for the course of bachelors in education. The paper is child development and learning and this is a particular module on behavioral learning theories. In this particular lecture, we are going to discuss on Skinner's learning theory and the presenter is Professor Jaseem Ahmed. The course coordinator of this particular video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. She is also the academic expert or reviewer for this video. The presenter or subject matter expert is Professor Jaseem Ahmed. He belongs to Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. And this video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha channels of MHRD, New Delhi. Hello dear learners, I am Professor Jaseem Ahmed from IAC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia. Today I am going to deliver a lecture on the topic Skinner's Learning Theory. And through this discussion and deliberation, we will try to put some light on behavioristic approach of learning and we'll discuss the experiment conducted by B.F. Skinner. We will also discuss the meaning of operant behavior and operant conditioning theory of learning. We will also discussed during the lecture about the implications of Skinner's theory of operant conditioning in classroom learning and also we will discuss the critic of operant conditioning theory of learning. So friends, we have already discussed about Pavlovian theory of classical conditioning and trial inner theory of learning. And so, first of all, we will try to put some light on behavioral learning theory. As we have already discussed, that uh, behavior learning theory is primarily concerned with observable behavior as opposed to internal events like thinking and emotions. Behavioral approach of learning uh, focuses on, you know, change of behavior, modification of behavior or bringing enduring change in the behavior of the learners. It is basically a, a, an attempt to create a sharp connection, a sharp bond between, you know, uh, the stimulus and response and the formation of habit among the learners. There is no importance or place of reasoning, logic, thinking, cognition, and other mental processes in behavioral approach of learning. Practice and repeated efforts are the center of learning in this approach of learning. Here in this approach, uh, we also find that there is uh, more concern with observable stimulus response behaviors and states all behaviors are learn through SR bond, association, and interaction with environment. Now friends, before we discuss about Skinner's operant conditioning theory of learning, let us try to uh, know B.H. Skinner. Uh, B.H. Skinner was an American psychologist, a behaviorist, an author, an inventor, and a social scientist. He was professor of psychology at Harvard University, USA from 1958 in 1974, he is considered as the most influential psychologist of the 20th century. Skinner is regarded as the father of operant conditioning. His work was based on Thorndike's law of effect, according to which behavior that results into feeling or earning the pleasure or satisfaction is likely to be repeated and thus finally learned. Contrary to this, the behavior that is followed by unpleasant consequences or displeasure is less likely to be. The Skinner introduced a new term into the Thorndike's law of, the law of effect, which is known as reinforcement. Behavior which is reinforced tend to be repeated, that is strengthened, and the behavior or responses which is not reinforced tends to die out or be extinguished or weakened. Now, friends, try to understand respondent and operant behavior. According to Skinner, there are two types of responses. 
one which is elicited on the presence of a specific stimulus or cause. These responses are called respondent behavior or these behavior which is you know elicited because of the presence of a particular stimulus are called respondent behavior. For example, if the food is present, only then saliva will be secreted. If some action is there, only then some reaction is observed. If you touch certain hot objects, your fingers are automatically withdrawn or are automatically pulled out. So in all these three cases, you find that particular stimulus is present and because of that, particular response is observed. Similarly, when you listen to music, you enjoy, you entertain yourself. So listening to, to the music is basically a stimulus and enjoyment of, you know, uh, the feeling of enjoyment is your response. Similarly, when we watch some of our favorite games, you know, we entertain ourselves. When we feel cold, generally we try to wear warm clothes. And all in all these cases, we find that a particular stimulus are present. And because of those stimulus, there are certain kind of responses are given by the individual. Second type of behavior are the behavior which is elicited without the presence of a specific stimulus or cause. These types of behavior are called operant behavior. Means the behavior which is uh, not because of a particular or a specific stimulus. The behavior is being shown or reflected uh, in its own way without uh, the presence of a particular stimulus or particular cause. Yeah. And so there is no any particular or specific cause behind that particular behavior. All these type of behavior are called operant behavior. And uh, for example, uh, when uh, we, uh, we move our legs, when we are uh, sitting, we move our legs when we are lying on the bed, we uh, generally move our hands sitting on chair and all these type of movements are basically operant responses or operant behavior. Similarly, you know, many, uh, many, many children uh, give random responses and be, behind those responses, there is no any certain specific stimulus. All these responses are basically, you know, uh, operant behavior, operant responses. So, in a nutshell, operant is a set of acts that constitute an organism's doing something. The consequence of the act is important and decides the fate of the act, whether to be repeated or withdrawn. Now, friends, try to understand the arguments put forth by Skinner. Uh, Skinner was opposed to the idea that uh, uh, there is only uh, response when the stimulus is present. So, uh, a stimulus creates responses. The, if there is no stimulus, there is no response. This was the basic idea and the shared idea about uh, in those days. Skinner opposed this idea of no stimulus, no response mechanism in the elicitation of behavior. Uh, he uh, thought that there may be responses without a specific stimulus or cause and if there are positive responses we may condition them for learning as we often manipulate the things in, in, in the environment with own initiative that is in the absence of any specific stimulus so it is not essential that a stimulus is always present for certain kind of activity the organism operates on the environment and in turn the environment responds to the activity Depending upon the responses of the environment, the behavior will be maintained, repeated or avoided. So, Skinner was focused on operant behavior. His entire experiment and his entire theory of learning is based upon operant responses or operant behavior. He was very much interested to study and to conduct experiment uh, uh, on operant behavior. And he was trying to find out ways to strengthen uh, the positive behavior of the learner and weaken the negative behavior of the animal in, on which he was experimenting. So, in front of a Skinner, basically you can see in the diagram that operant behavior may be of two types. The first one, those behavior which are accepted by the society, accepted by the community and appreciated by the society. So, all these are basically positive, you know, operant or positive behavior you can say. And the other type of operant behavior may be the negative one, which is not liked by the society which is not ex uh, acceptable by the society, by the community, by the family member, means those behavior which are, which are avoidable in nature are basically negative behavior. So the challenge before the Skinner was how to strengthen the positive behavior and how to weaken the negative behavior. And for that, Skinner, through his experiment, gave the idea of positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement and punishment about which we will be discussing in the slides. 
So now try to understand what is operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a kind of learning process whereby a response or operant is made more probable or more frequent by reinforcement. It helps in the learning of operant behavior, the behavior that is not necessarily associated with the known stimuli. Or it is also known as R type conditioning, as we have discussed in the case of you know Pavlovian conditioning. A stimulus was more important, and so the conditioning which was done in Pavlovian classical conditioning is known as S type conditioning. But here in this case of Skinner, where operant conditioning is uh, uh, is being done, operant behavior is being you know strengthened, means the response is more important, and so this is called as R type conditioning. And uh, uh, this particular operant theory of learning and operant condition also focuses and give us a, a direction that we should give children and the learners free space and freedom to emit or evoke their responses and try to find appropriate response and fix them, condition them for learning. So friends now try to understand uh, what was the experiment of Skinner. Skinner in 1948 studied operant conditioning by conducting experiments using animals like a rat pigeon, which he placed in a Skinner box, which was similar to the Thorndike's puzzle box with some modification. So friends, now discuss the Skinner's experiment. Skinner used a Skinner box in his experiment. You can see in the diagram, this is a Skinner box. And uh, you are also looking at the rat there in the Skinner box. This is, this rat is basically hungry. And the task for a, uh, for a Skinner was to, to teach this rat how to press the lever and how to get the food. So may the main purpose of the experiment was to train the rat to make the rat learn how to press lever so that he can uh, get food to quench his you know hunger. You can also see in the picture that there is a lever on the on one side in the Skinner box and uh, there is food container next to the lever. You can also see in the diagram that food pallet to drop the food into the container is present and uh, there is also provision of shock generator that is an, a kind of electric current so that uh, uh, the discomfort being felt by the rat can be removed and can be provided uh, in, in a sequence and uh, uh, through through there is also provision of you can see that light two types of light is there that one is red and one is blue light and so as Skinner tried to use, use all these you know uh, components in, in, his, in his experiment and ultimately we will find that the rat learned how to, uh, to press the lever and get the food. So in this experiment, uh, a rat was put uh, into the Skinner box and the rat was hungry and in search of food, uh, the rat uh, moved here and there uh, uh, to get food, but food was not available. Uh, so in, in, in the entire process of searching the food, uh, at a time comes when rat uh, pressed the lever out randomly and because as soon as the rat, uh, as soon as the lever is pressed, you know the food is food is appears food is appearing in front of the uh, uh, the rat in the container the rat eats the food and that grains and quench uh, its hunger and uh, uh, then started to move here and there so whenever rat again feels hungry uh, she try to recall those uh, th those events and try to move again towards liver and uh, try to press uh, the liver to get the food and uh, in this process the, the process entire process is being repeated and the rat quickly learned to go straight to the liver after a few times of being put in the box the consequence of receiving food if they press the liver ensure that they would repeat the action again and again on repeating the same experiment many times the rat finally learned how to get food on being hungry it directly go to the liver press it get the grains and eat it to quench its hunger. Here in the entire experiment, here in the entire process of operant conditioning, two uh, very important things is the positive, you know, reinforcement and negative reinforcement. So positive reinforcement strengthens a behavior by providing a, con a consequence an individual finds the rewarding. As we see in our classroom teaching, if the teacher gives A plus grade to a child on his homework every time as a reward, the child will be more likely to repeat this behavior in the future, thus strengthening the behavior of completing his or her homework. Similarly, uh, negative reinforcement is the, uh, the removal of an unpleasant reinforcer or an adverse stimulus which is rewarding to the learner. 
negative reinforcement strengthens behavior because it stops or removes an unpleasant experience. For example, if you are absent from your class, you have to pay a fine of rupees 10 or to take a running round of the playground in the sun. So you will attain classes to avoid a fine or threat of taking a round of the playground, thus strengthening the behavior of attending classes. Now friends, try to understand the key elements of the theory of operant conditioning. So the first one in the series is neutral operant. Responses from the environment that neither increase nor decrease the probability of a behavior being repeated are called as neutral operant, which was not the concern of D.F. Skinner in his experiment. The second one is reinforcers. Responses from the environment that increase or decrease the probability of a behavior being repeated are called reinforcers. And these are of two types. One is positive reinforcement and the other one is negative reinforcement. So positive reinforcement increase the probability and frequency of positive behavior whereas negative reinforcement decrease the frequency and probability of negative behavior and at the same time increase the probability of desirable behavior or responses. The third one is punishers. Responses from the environment that decrease the likelihood of a behavior being repeated are called punishment. Punishment weakens behavior. It is always applied after the behavior or response has already occurred. Fourth one is reward and reinforcement. A reward is something which has value to the person giving the reward, but may not necessarily be of value to, to the person receiving the reward. Whereas a reinforcer is something which benefits the person receiving and so results in an increase of a certain type of behavior. That's why the Skinner is talking about reinforcement and not about reward. So friends, now try to uh, differentiate between negative reinforcement and punishment. We have been you know, observing that many of the students are having problem in differentiating between these two terms. So try to understand it properly. Reinforcement tells you what to do, whereas punishment only tells you what not to do. So the direction you can understand. Whereas punishment is given after the negative behavior or response has occurred, whereas negative reinforcement is given prior to the response, that is on the probability of an undesirable response or behavior. Punished behavior is not forgotten. It is just suppressed for the time being. It may return when punishment is no longer present or exist. Similarly, punishment causes increased aggression. It shows that aggression is a way to cope with problems. Then uh, it is also point, uh, it is also to be noted that punishment creates fear that can generalize to un undesirable behavior. For example, fear of a school, fear of teacher, fear of subject, etc. Next one is schedules of reinforcement. Is it is very important uh, in in terms of uh, uh, learning and in terms of shaping the behavior of the learner. For conditioning the operant behavior of the learners, Skinner put forward the idea of different patterns or schedules of reinforcement. Foster and Skinner, 1957, devised different ways of delivering reinforcement and found that this had effects on the response rate and the extinction rate. Let us see the important schedules of reinforcement. The first one is continuous reinforcement schedule. As per this schedule, the learners are reinforced or rewarded for every correct response during acquisition of learning. For example, a teacher gives a reward or reinforces each correct reply or response of the student. Not a single correct response or correct solution of a problem is left without reward or appreciation. In this schedule, response rate is slow and extinction rate is generally far. Second one is fixed interval reinforcement schedule. In this schedule, the learner may be rewarded for a response made only after a predetermined interval of time, maybe every 5 minutes, every 10 minutes, every 1 hour and so on. No matter how many times the learner is giving correct responses during the fixed time interval, only after the expiry of fixed time interval, the learner is reinforced or rewarded for his response. In this schedule, both response as well as uh, extinction rate is medium. Third one is fixed ratio reinforcement schedule. 
in this schedule the learner is rewarded or reinforced after a fixed number of responses for example a learner may be given reward or reinforcement after answering a fixed number of questions or solving problem say 2 4 6 8 or whatever uh, number of the teacher fixes this schedule is observed to be practiced by employers in factories workshops where wages are paid on on piece rate system and the workers are paid some extra wages as bonus or reward or reinforcement after each fixed number of pieces completed in this schedule response rate is fast and extinction rate is easy the fourth one is variable reinforcement schedule in this schedule the reinforcement is given at varying intervals of time or after a varying number of responses here in this case reinforcement is intermittent or irregular the learner is constantly motivated during the learning process in the weight of reinforcement. In this schedule, response rate is fast and extinction rate is slow. Next uh, important key element is behavior shaping. A Skinner also gave the notion of behavior shaping through successive approximation. He argues that the principles of reinforcement and punishment can be used to produce or shape extremely complex behavior if these are delivered in such a way as to encourage an organism to move closer and closer to the desired behavior each time. In doing this, the conditions required to receive the reward should shift each time the organism moves a step closer to the desired behavior. According to Skinner, most animal and human behavior can be explained as a product of this type of successive approximation may be highly useful in language learning among let us now discuss the educational implications of operant conditioning of learning operant conditioning can be applied to explain a wide variety of behaviors from the process of learning to addiction and language acquisition it also has practical applications and can be applied in classrooms uh, prisons and psychiatric hospitals some of the important educational implications are discussed Number one, the learning process and teaching learning environment must create minimum frustration and maximum satisfaction so that the learners are automatically driven towards learning and training. Next one is desirable behavior or responses must be rewarded. That is, each and every desirable behavior or responses of the students must be rewarded or reinforced. Reinforcement will increase the rate of such responses and ultimately lead to learning. We must remember these lines of a Skinner. We are what we have been rewarded for being. What we call personality is nothing more than consistent behavior patterns that summarizes our reinforcement history. We learn to speak English, for example, because we have been rewarded for approximating the sounds of the English language in our early home environment. If we happen to be brought up in a Japanese or a Russian home, we would learn to speak Japanese or Russian because when we approximately sound in that language, we would have been attended to or rewarded in some other way. So, uh, next one is operant conditioning provides an external approach to motivation rather than internal motivation. It considers the consequence of behavior or response as source of motivation to repeat it again. Getting food is reinforcing rat or pigeon to behave or respond in a particular way. In other way, knowledge of correct response is reinforcing the learner. Secondary reinforcers like verbal praise, positive face gesture and body language, feeling of success, good marks, satisfactory grades, prizes, medals, opportunity to do the work of one's own choice, all these constitute good motivator. Teacher must do proper planning of the schedules of reinforcement as the theory of operant conditioning lays stress on the importance of schedules in the process of reinforcement of behavior. As the theory advocates, we should avoid punishment for unlearning the undesirable behavior and for shaping the desirable behavior. Punishment proves ineffective in the long run. It suppresses the negative behavior for the time being and when threat of punishment is removed, behavior returns to its original level. Hence, theory of operant conditioning suggests rewarding the appropriate behavior 
and ignoring the inappropriate behavior for spiritual expansion. Next one is that development of teaching machine, programmed learning, and computer assisted instructions is based on the theory of operant conditioning, the provision of feedback to the learners in face to face as well as in distance education program is an important implications of operant conditioning. Providing learners the opportunity to study and learn on their own pace is also the outcome of operant conditioning. It is also one of the most important attributes of the distance education program and program learning. The curriculum should provide children ample space for free thinking, questioning, activity, experiments to emit or evoke their responses and teachers must reinforce the positive behavior for their learning and development. Now friends, let's discuss the critics of operant conditioning of learning. Operant conditioning fails to consider the role of inherited and cognitive factors in learning and thus it is an incomplete explanation of the learning process in humans. For example, Kohler found that primates often seem to solve problems in a flash of insight rather than be trial and error learning. Similarly, social learning theory of Mandura suggests that humans can learn automatically through observation rather than through personal experience and Vygotsky's social constructivism suggests that human learns through social interaction. According to some of the psychologists, we cannot generalize from studies on animals to humans as their anatomy and physiology is different from humans and they cannot think about their experiences and invoke reason, patience, memory or self-control. So we find that a Skinner theory of operant condition is also mechanical in nature as we had already discussed in the case of classical conditioning and trial error theory of learning. And so the entire focus you know, uh, in, in, in this particular operant conditioning is shifting from you know, S type conditioning to R type conditioning. There is no much stress on cognitive abilities and cognitive functions of the learners. Hence, human cognitive potential is not given proper heed in this particular theory of learning. Uh, friends, now let us summarize what we have discussed in the entire you know, uh, lecture. We have uh, discussed about the respondent behavior, those behavior which are evoked because of some prior stimulus, whereas there are another type of behavior which are, you know, elicited. In, and in absence of any particular behavior and the focus of a Skinner experiment is on operant behavior. These operant behavior may be positive in nature that is acceptable by the society, by the community, by the family and the operant behavior may be negative in nature which is not acceptable by the family member and by the society. A Skinner tried to, to strengthen the positive behavior through the process of the reinforcement. So uh, the reinforcement are also of two types positive as well as negative. Positive reinforcement, you know, enhances the probability or chances of repetition of the positive behavior, whereas negative reinforcement uh, uh, tries to reduce or decrease the chances of negative behavior. Uh, one another important uh, way is punishment uh, and avoiding punishment. Uh, another so when some learner is uh, is doing some negative uh, uh, task or negative report, uh, responses are there, we may punish, but a Skinner theory also tells that punishment is not a best way or a good way or a favorite way uh, of uh, uh, shaping the behavior of the learner. We should avoid this one because punishment is not, uh, you know, punishment do not uh, eliminate the negative behavior for a, for a long time. We have also discussed the educational implications and the most important I think is that the teacher should provide uh, ample opportunities, full opportunities, and full freedom to the learners to, uh, to, uh, to design their activities, to, to, to design their learning, to design their experiments and give them the opportunity to ask questions and, uh, and uh, learn in playful activity. Through this activity and through these opportunities, teacher can provide uh, the chances to evoke and to elicit their responses and teacher's task is to find out what are the positive responses and try to strengthen them, try to uh, condition them and make them the part of their personality. We have also discussed the critics of behaviorism the operant conditioning of learning. So, uh, friend, hope you have uh, learned the entire discussion and deliberation. These are the references uh, which have been consulted in preparation of this particular uh, lecture. I hope you uh, would.
you have enjoyed this lecture. I have learned a lot about open conditioning. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in the next presentation. I extend my thanks to Professor Jaseem Ahmed for this wonderful discussion. This was the module on behavioral learning theories and the lecture was based on Skinner's learning theory. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the national lockdown period for COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you.